The Elder Scrolls show us what was, and what yet will be, and they have revealed much to me. The Elder Scrolls Legends is very similar to other card games. Magic the Gathering, Hearthstone, take your pick. Whether they like it or not, any new card game is going to be compared to the biggest kids on the block. In fact, I remember at PAX East this year, speaking with one of the developers of this game, I brought up Hearthstone and he got visibly upset. And I understand why, because nobody wants their baby to be considered a copy of something else that's already out there. It's just gonna happen, and there's really no way around it. However, with that said, the Elder Scrolls Legends does have its own little unique twist, and I think it's good enough to potentially make it a game that you should check out. Here today, guys, we're gonna go over everything you need to know about the Elder Scrolls Legends, from the time that I spent with it and the research that I've done. I'm gonna start things off by talking about the basics of the gameplay. The goal is simple. You play creatures, spells, and enhancements as you attempt to get your opponent's life to zero. Each player starts a game with 30 health and a deck consisting of anywhere between 50 and 70 cards. Cards are played by using Magicka, which you accumulate at one per turn. Creatures in the game have health and damage values, as well as special properties like Drain, Guard, Summon, Charge, Last Grasp, Ward, and Regenerate, just to name a few. Spells in this game are called Actions, and they do mostly what you expect. They can deal damage, destroy a creature, pump up your creatures, draw cards, gain life, etc. There are equipment cards called Items that you can use to enhance your creatures, as well as support cards that either have persistent ongoing benefits or can be activated for a special effect. Cards are divided into five primary colors and attributes, red for strength, green for agility, blue for intelligence, yellow for willpower, and purple for endurance. Each color represents a style or theme, with certain cards having additional effects based on how many of the same type that you have. In all of these ways, The Elder Scrolls Legends plays like any other card game. However, there are three major unique features that set this game apart. The first is the lane mechanic. There are two lanes in every match, and whenever you play a creature, you choose which lane to put them in. Creatures in the chosen lane can only attack other creatures in that same lane. On top of that, lanes have unique properties. In normal games, the right lane gives your creatures cover, which means they can't be attacked until the next turn. In the campaign and solo arenas, lanes can have additional special modifiers. For example, I I played in one game where if you had the most creatures in a lane at the start of your turn, that lane would deal two damage to your opponent. Lanes add an additional layer of strategy to the gameplay. You can spread your creatures out among both lanes, or stack them on one side attempting to overwhelm your opponents, but at the same time making yourself susceptible to lane removal. If your opponent plays a threatening creature in one lane, you can choose to either stack up that lane to take it out, or avoid it altogether. The second unique mechanic in this game is the rune system. Each player has five runes placed at the 25, 20, 15, 10, and 5 health markers. When your opponent damages you to that marker, the rune will break and you'll draw a card. On top of that though, the card draw plays into the prophecy system. Beyond their normal abilities, certain cards in this game also have the attribute of prophecy. If a card with prophecy is drawn when a rune breaks, that card can be played immediately for free. This adds an element of surprise and a chance to punish your opponent for dealing too much damage to you on one turn. On the attacking side, it once again adds another layer of strategy and decision making. Do I attack him now for that couple of extra damage, but also breaking the rune and giving him a chance to draw a card and potentially letting him play a powerful prophecy card for free? It's another thing to think about and another level of strategy. And the third major difference with this game is the card upgrade system. You're essentially able to morph cards into enhanced versions of themselves, taking what starts off as a basic card and getting a much better version of it. This is initially presented periodically as you level up, but it's my understanding that you'll eventually get access to all versions of these morphable cards. I still thought it was pretty neat as a little extra choice for when per first playing the game. I also want to mention the fact that unlike Hearthstone, this game has very little RNG in the cards themselves. Certainly drawing cards is an RNG process, and the top decking of prophecy cards gives you an 
extra boost that you can need, but the actual cards themselves and their abilities and effects are mostly static. You know what will happen with each card. And the minimal amount of RNG is one of the things that I always preferred to magic over Hearthstone, so I'm pleased to see that the Elder Scrolls Legends is taking a similar road. So these are the general's basics of the gameplay and the things that make the Elder Scrolls Legends different. Let's talk about the actual game modes that you're going to be playing. Starting off with the fundamental basic one of versus battle. This is the traditional card game dueling mode. Players build their deck of 50 to 70 cards and queue up to face an opponent of similar strength. There's no frills, you're just deck building, having strategy, and execution. Winning games lets you level up through a progression system and reward you with in-game currency as well as card unlocks. This mode is pretty straightforward and is bound to be where most of the competitively minded people will spend their time, building and tuning decks and evolving with the meta. However, this is also the place that tends to be where people who spend the most time or money unlocking cards have the advantage, and that's where these other game modes come in. Starting with Story Mode, which takes you through several acts and chapters telling the tale of a group of adventurers. You come across Dark Elves, Red Guard, Khajiit, Nords, everyone you would expect from the Elder Scrolls universe. Each chapter begins and ends with a cinematic unfolding the story. And I don't want to spoil anything for those of you who might play it, but I'll just say it has its high and its low points. There's a few well set up encounters against menacing foes, juxtaposed by the occasional, you are walking through the woods and then all of a sudden, ah, spiders, and then you fight a deck of spiders. I was overall very impressed though, with a campaign taking me roughly three hours, and as far as I can tell, they plan to do more in the future. The campaign gameplay also adds fun little twists to the lane mechanic, with special modifiers making your games more interesting, fun, or challenging. At the end of certain missions, you're also left with a choice, a kind of choose your own adventure style of decision making. You could choose to either take that ancient grimoire unveiling its secrets, or destroy it and do what is right, each choice resulting in you getting access to a different card. Next up we've got the Solo Arena, a draft mode in which you attempt to defeat 8 AI opponents and a final boss. The further along you make it, the better your rewards. You construct a deck of 30 cards by choosing from one of three randomly selected cards at a time. Once your deck is built, you choose your first opponent from the available 8, defeating all 8, then lets you face the final boss. Like in story mode, your opponents in solo arena can be stronger than normal, having additional health, starting with cards already in play, or even having unique lane effects. Every win lets you take an additional card and add it to your deck, tailoring it to your liking and to better face your upcoming opponents. The challenge is defeating all 9 enemies with only 3 chances to lose. This can be especially difficult given how strong the final boss is. If you defeat all 9 though, you'll reap the rewards. And then there's the versus arena. Very similar to solo arena, only you're playing against real people. You make a 30 card deck from randomly selected cards, defeat as many opponents as you can with only 3 lives, go further, get better rewards. Versus arena does not have the special lane modifiers or the additional card after every win, it's just your normal lanes and your normal gameplay. I should mention that both the solo and versus arena cost the in-game currency of gold or a single purchasable arena ticket to enter, but we'll talk about the store stuff in a little bit. Next I want to get on to the deck building. It's pretty straightforward. All the cards that you've unlocked while playing the game go into a collection. You construct decks from the collection of 50 to 70 cards and then take these decks into the versus battle or story modes. There's a filter for the different types of cards or their casting costs, you can also search by the name. You build your deck, combining multiple colors or going with a single color, although I found in most of my playtime the majority of the decks consisted of two colors. And what about those cards that you don't have access to? Well, there is card crafting. You're able to use soul gems which are earned in game or by deconstructing cards you don't need, and then you take those soul gems to craft cards you do want. Now let's move on to the store. Currently in the store, you're able to purchase card packs and arena tickets. Card packs prices range from 2 packs for $2.99 or 60 packs for $69.99. You can also buy one arena ticket for $1.99 or six arena tickets for $9.99. Prices seem fairly average and fair when it comes to other free-to-play card games or just other card games in general. Nothing seems too outrageous, and I believe these prices are actually slightly better than that of Hearthstone, which is probably a smart choice by the developer. So that is the gameplay. That's what makes this game unique, all of the game modes, deck constructing, crafting, how do I feel about the game? Well, at the end of the day, The Elder Scrolls Legends seems like a fun and competent card game. It's well polished, everything works, I think I only encountered one issue of the game freezing up, but 
hey, it's still in beta. They seem to have taken some of my favorite aspects of both Hearthstone and Magic and melded them together, while also adding their own unique twists with the lanes, with the card upgrade system, and with the rune system. That, plus this game has the Elder Scrolls feel. It is seeping in it. Loads of character. From the themes with the different races and factions, to the artwork, the music, and the voice acting, this game makes you feel the nostalgia of playing any Elder Scrolls game. In fact, I felt like many of the voice actors for the cards were the same as prior Elder Scrolls games, both the MMO and the single player title. I haven't done research into the actual voice actors, and if they're not actually them, they're damn near sound alikes. I'm not ready to die! Don't worry, I've got this. Isgramon! They won't escape us. Take on my clan, you take on me! I, I just can't express enough how much this made me feel that nostalgia of Elder Scrolls games. They really nailed it. The music, the artwork, the voice acting, the sound effects, everything. They have nailed the Elder Scrolls feeling, and that's a great thing. The game is planned to release later this year and will be free to play, so if you like any of the things we talked about here, you can check it out yourself, or you cannot. It's up to you. But if you like card games and you like the Elder Scrolls, I think this one is worth giving a look. I myself am a huge card game nerd, though, so I am a of course biased <laughs> all right guys that is gonna do it for me here today as always i want to thank you so much for watching my stuff hope you guys enjoyed it let me know in the comment section below what you think and until next time i'll see you later